Good morning. Um, and you can just go to the next slide. So my name is Claire Shooter. I'm very happy to be with you all this morning. Um, and first of all, I'd like to thank Sri, but also especially Dr. Shuchuk, who's actually on this call today. Um, she's been incredibly supportive and has given me a lot of feedback back and forth, um, even up to this point and hoping to publish. So thank you so much. And thank you to Sri and Ascendium. Um, so we had a, a variety of different questions. Um, I'm going to kind of talk through them rather than just read, read from them, but essentially uh, Ascendium asked us to, first of all, look at what, what kinds of factors, what kinds of things affect whether practitioners and policymakers in post-secondary and workforce training contexts actually use the research um, that's in the research literature or not. So whether it's you know, time constraints, you know, they're kind of trying to move really quickly, whether it's um, not really understanding the research, what kinds of hurdles, what kinds of barriers are keeping um, people in the field from actually accessing and using the research knowledge? Because of course, our end goal as researchers is to produce translatable literature that can then be used to support individuals. And I should say, um, this, this research was focused on um, uh, programs at post-secondary education and workforce training contexts. So really individuals who are um, just leaving high school and looking to, to further their career paths. And then the second question was kind of building off of the first one, which is what strategies can we use knowing those hurdles? What strategies do knowledge brokers, kind of the individuals in between the researchers and the practitioners, what strategies do they say are effective for improving research use? And then on the other side, what strategies do um, practitioners say help them kind of understand the, the research better and motivate them to actually implement the research and practice in their decision making and in their day to day? And then thirdly, obviously, if you're a knowledge broker and you're making these events, you're sending out these emails, you're using all kinds of strategies to increase research use, you wanna know what strategies are helpful and what strategies are not helpful. So um, we also looked at what can be um, efforts, how to best evaluate those um, in education contexts and, and what kind of tools are reliable in education contexts in order for knowledge brokers to then use those tools. Okay, next slide. So out of that research, kind of jumping to the very end, we found that um, basically out of all of these recommendations, the most important thing is understanding um, the practitioners, being able to take their perspective, being able to realize it might not always be kind of the person at the very top that you wanna reach out to, but realizing who the most important social actor is in an institution who's gonna disseminate the research um, and be kind of a motivator to the rest of the institution to use the research, that is really key, building up those relationships. So kind of with one in individual rather than kind of um, sending out an email to, um, the administrators or, or to the institution as a whole, that is incredibly important. And then understanding their timeline. So policymakers work on a very different timeline than researchers. And that culture gap is kind of a big part of why research is often fail to be implemented. So understanding, okay, at this point, they're deciding on um, what policy to implement at this higher education institution. Okay, at this point, they're deciding how they're going to implement it, and then kind of feeding information accordingly and building up that relationship with one specific person so that if there are questions on the policymaker side or practitioner side, they know this one person to reach out to um, in order to get more answers. Um, and then just lastly, um, the KMB matrix tool, which was developed by Amanda Cooper, that is actually the only one that we found. There are a lot of um, knowledge utilization evaluators that are really useful in, in public health context, but we wanted to make sure we, we found a tool that was evaluated in an education context. So the KMB matrix tool is a really valuable one for knowledge brokers to kind of see 
what strategies are helpful for increasing research use um, and which ones could be improved. Um, so we can move on to the next slide. And then key takeaways, I kind of took this, this slide in, in three directions. So in terms of the data, um, sorry, I'll, I'll wrap up, sorry about that. Um, in terms of the data, uh, it was almost entirely qualitative and 100% descriptive data. So very much um, there's a need for uh, quasi-experimental or randomized experimental designs there. Um, in terms of the process, uh, collaboration is key whenever you're working on these literature reviews, particularly due to the subjectivity of qualitative and mixed um, method uh, primary articles. And then I, I really would emphasize this internship was incredibly valuable, both to my own workflow, as well as kind of giving me a really fast um, snapshot of what the literature is on research use. Um, and it can produce a publishable whole product. So it was very valuable experience to me. Um, and I, I cannot overestimate how uh, wonderful it was to work with Ascendium and Sri. So thank you very much.